This video covers section 7.7 .7, and in it we are going to be solving applications that involve rational expressions. Now in the last video, section 7.6, .6, we learned how to solve rational equations. So now we're going to apply that idea to some real world idea. And the, the first type of application is this idea of shared work problems. When you have some job that needs to be done and two different people or two different entities are sharing the work to complete that job. And the idea that we want to start out with before we even start looking at a problem is one way of thinking about the rate at which a job is done. And so the rate, if you will, the rate, the rate is always 1 over the time it takes to complete job. I'll explain what that means in a second here. Time take it takes to complete job. So for example, let's say a job takes three hours to do. Let's say it takes you three hours to clean your house. How much of the job have you cleaned, or how much of the house have you cleaned in one hour? Well, if it takes three hours total, in one hour you've completed one third of the cleaning where you've cleaned one-third of the house. So you're cleaning the house at a rate of one-third of the house per unit time, in this case per hour. So we're going to use that idea to develop solving these equations and it's actually once you understand that idea about we can consider rates as one over the time, it's quite easy to do shared work problems because then in shared work we take one over some time. In this case, um, we'll, we'll call it, um, actually let me, let me do this. Because cause once we know what the rate or how to find a rate using one over the time, then what we can do is if we're sharing work, we can we can add rates together because because we're adding two different people working on the same job. So if we add, let's call it rate one to rate two, we get a faster speed. That the job when two people work together, the job's going to get done faster. So we can call this a combined rate. Combined rate. So let's read through the problem. It says, Manny can paint a house in five hours less time than it takes David to paint the same house. If they work together, it takes six hours to paint the house. How long does it take David to paint the house if he is working alone? So remember, in that last sentence, it usually tells us what we're trying to solve for. And it says, how long, that signifies a time, how long does it take David to to paint the house if he's working alone. So let's go ahead and define that variable. Let's say, let's say D is the is the time for David to paint the house. Okay, so now coming back here, so my rate one and my rate two, what are my, my two people that are working on painting the house? We have Manny and we have David. Those two people are working together. And these are both rates, the rate at which Manny paints and the rate at which David paints. And we want to add those two rates together. And remember, rate is one over the time to complete the job. So this is going to have the form one over some time plus 1 over some time for David equals 1 over the combined time. So what do we know? We know that that D is David. So, so David's rate, if it takes D time for David to paint the house, then his rate is 1 over D. Now Manny, on the other hand, can paint the house in five hours less time than it takes David. So Manny's rate is going to be one over Manny's time. And Manny's time is 
five hours less than David. And then their combined rate, that's one over their combined time. And how long does it take them together to paint the house? Well, it says right there, that's six hours. So this is one over six. And that's really, that's all there is to setting this up. It's one over time plus one over time equals one over time. And then how do we solve an equation like this? Do you remember from the last video? We want to multiply by the least common denominator. We want to multiply everything by the least common denominator. And in this case, the least common denominator is going to be all three denominators added together. So we'll have 6, we will have d, and then we will also have d minus 5. And so every term needs to be multiplied by that. By 6, d, d minus 5. And again, by 6, d d minus 5, and also on the last term. Because as we learned in the last video, this allows us to cancel all over the place. Can't, most importantly, it allows us to cancel our denominators. So d minus 5's cancel, d's cancel, and the 6's cancel. And so this equation, the first term here, changes to just 6d plus second term we're, term, we're left with 6 and the d minus 5. And then equals, and then the last term we have d times d minus 5. And of course we distribute, so we have 6d plus 6d minus 30 equals d squared minus 5d. Okay, and notice this is a quadratic equation, so we've talked about how to solve these. We need to get everything equal to zero so we can factor. If we combine like terms first, we have 12d minus 30 equals d squared minus 5d. And then go ahead and move things over now. So we have zero equals d squared. And I'm moving over a couple of items. This 12d needs to move over. It becomes a minus 12d. And this negative 30 moves over. It becomes a positive 30. And when I, so I, when I combine those d's at minus 5 and minus 12, that makes minus 17d plus 30. And we can factor that. That, that factors to what? Thirty, you have five times six. We can't get seventeen with that. We have three times ten. We also though have two times fifteen. That'll work. So we have d minus two and d minus fifteen equals zero. And remember we said each of these equals zero. D minus two equals zero, which means d equals two. And then d minus fifteen equals 0, which means d equals 15. So remember what d was. d was the time for David to paint the house. And one of these times we have to throw out, it doesn't make much sense. Because remember, Manny can paint the house in five hours less time than it takes David. And if David's time is two hours, you can't be five hours less than that. So we're going to have to throw out that two-hour time. It must be that David paints the house in 15 hours. David does it in 15 hours, which means then that Manny must be 15, 5 less than 15, which is 10 hours. So Manny paints the house in 10 hours, David paints it in 15 hours. That's the end of that problem. We also, though, have another type of problem. It's called distance equals rate times time problems and we've worked a little bit with this throughout the semester but we're going to take a little bit of a different look so we do hopefully remember that relationship between distance rate and time it says Marge hauled the load of oranges 600 miles on the way home the next day she drove 15 miles per hour faster than, than she did the previous day if the total time for the two days was 18 hours find Marge's driving speed on the way home so a lot of times the best way to solve these, the easiest way is to set up a table. And so what we have here is we have
few columns. We're going to, in the left spots over here, we're going to write our two different parts of the trip. So, so first she hauled a load of oranges 600 miles. So this is, uh, let's call this the going part of the trip. Then she, she came back the next day, so she drove home. But she drove faster. Obviously, she drove faster because she wasn't hauling all those oranges. And so this is the coming back. So one day she's going, the next day she's coming back. And each one of those days, she drove a distance. She drove that distance at a certain rate, and she drove at that rate for a certain time. So we're going to fill in this chart with the things that we know. We know that she hauled a load of oranges 600 miles, so her going trip is 600 miles, which also means that her coming back is also going to be 600 miles because she's coming back to the same place. On the way home the next day, she drove 15 miles per hour faster than she did the previous day. Now, we don't know how fast she drove the previous day, so we could call that, say, X. But we know on the way back, she drove 15 miles per hour faster. So that's 15 uh, miles per hour more, plus 15. And then we, we don't know the time. It does say that the total driving time for the two days was 18 hours. So 18 hours was the total driving time. But that doesn't tell us anything about the going and coming. The, what we're going to use here, though, is this relationship. If, if distance is equal to rate times time, I could solve this equation for time. What would I have to do? I would have to divide both sides by, by r. If I divided both sides by r, they would cancel there. And so my r, my time, would be equal to distance over rate. And that's what we're, how we're going to find time for this third column. We're going to take our distance that we know of 600, and we're going to divide it by our rate of x. And same thing with the coming back. Same distance of 600, but now we're dividing it by our rate that's 15 miles per hour faster. And so we now have an expression that represents the time for the going trip and the time for the returning trip. And we know the total driving time was 18 hours. So that tells us that the going time, 600 over x right here, added to the time it took to return, that's the 600 over x plus 15, that if I take those two times for the two trips and I add them together, the total time was 18 hours. And now notice we have another equation with fractions. So now to solve, we multiply everything by the least common denominator. And what's that going to be? Well, it's our two denominators. Our least common denominator is the x and the x plus 15. And we need to be sure to even multiply the 18 by that. That has to be multiplied by x times x plus 15. The 600 has to be multiplied by x times x plus 15. All these terms do x, x plus 15, and then times x times x plus 15. And then we'll go ahead and cancel the denominators. Here's x and x. Here's x plus 15, x plus 15. And nothing cancels on the right side of the equal sign. And now we go ahead and simplify. So we have 600 times parentheses x plus 15 plus 600 times only x equals 18 times x times x plus 15. And now what do we do? Now we distribute. Get rid of those parentheses. So we have 600x, 600 times 15. What's that equal to? That's 9,000 plus another 600x. And we go ahead and distribute. of 18x times x is 18x squared. And what's 18 times 15? 18 times 15 is 270. This is plus 270. Um, combine like terms, 600 and 600 is 1,200. So we have 1,200 x plus 9,000. 
is equal to 18x squared plus 200 and, oh, that's an x there, 270x. And now it's a quadratic equation. We've got to get everything to one side. I'm going to move everything to the right. So this minus 12, 1200 moves over here, minus 1200x. And this 9,000, that's going to move to the right side as well. That becomes a negative. Okay, that's a positive 9,000. It moves over there, it becomes a negative 9,000. And then the left-hand side is 0 equals 18x squared, 270 minus 1,200 is minus 930x minus 9,000. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull any GCF out of this before we factor all the way. So pull up our calculator. It is 930, is that divisible by 18? It is not. Is it divisible by 9? 930 divided by 9. Nope, how about by 6? 930 divided by 6. Yes, it is. Is 9,000 is 9, divisible by 6? Yes, it is. So we have 155 and 1,500 when we pull a, pull a 6 out. Coming back here, if we pull a 6 out, that leaves 3x squared minus... What was it? 155 minus 155x minus 1500 minus 1500. And now we can go ahead and try to go all the rest of the way with this. I'm not going to actually stop here, but um, what you would do is you'd use your tic-tac-toe to go ahead and finish it off. We have 3x and x and figure out what numbers multiply here to get 1500 and you could go ahead and finish the problem. Like I said, I want to move on to the next video. Thank you for your time.